Reliable information which in us has it that the election petition tribunal holding in the appeal court deliberated on issues of the live broadcast and the judge's verdict concerning this was thus. The judges intimated the applicants that the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria did not permit for the live broadcasting of court proceedings by any means. Opinion, however, has it that by this, the judges have sent a message to Nigerians that they will by all means stick to the provisions of the law, while some others think that there are possibilities that the judge obviously has something to hide. Having said this, I think if the initial is the main reason for the rejection of the live broadcast, that means we must brace up for better days ahead, as it ultimately means that the tribunal will dispense justice with equity and fairness, adhering strictly to the provisions of the law. Interestingly, people have solicited that the tribunal should not judge on the basis of technicalities but should rather base their judgments on the merit because making conclusions on technicalities could create allowance for them to legitimize illegitimacy. For the judiciary, my advice to it is that in deciding this case, it must look critically at the justice of the matter, not at technicalities. It must look at the wishes of the Nigerian people as expressed through the polls, not technicality. Even though most judges have argued that the provisions of the law is made available and possible by politicians as they only have the responsibility to interpret the law. Of course, Nigerians have been hoping and praying that they dispense justice without bias of any kind as Nigerians feel this will be the opportunity for the judicial system to redeem its image as the last hope of the common man. Anyway, as stated by Peter Obi's counsel, the court has kick-started the preliminary hearings and the hopes of Nigerians are high as they will begin with the most controversial and much talked about 25% of the federal capital territory. Recall, however, that many legal luminaries have argued that the issues of 25% can be concluded in just one day. Nigeria is the only country where you find something like this. There's no other country. I, 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 I challenge you to go and investigate and find out. Now, the big win for obedience is that the judge has ordered INEC to permit Labour Party and its legal counsel to, without delay, inspect the Beavers machine produce results, which they had promised to save in the IRF portal, owing to an earlier permission granted INEC to clear the Beavers machine results in preparation for the governorship elections. INEC, however, seeked to object the order, but the judge insisted that it was a legitimate right of Labour Party to inspect the outcome of the presidential election result, as it has to do with every information collated from the presidential election. They, however, intimated the court that the information about the presidential election had been erased from the Beavers machine and transferred to the back end as the Beavers was used to conduct the governorship election. At this point, the judge vehemently insisted that INEC should ensure that the election results were made available for Labour Party Council to cite. Noting, however, that INEC was already in contempt of the court after resisting the Labour Party from assessing the materials. However, upon citing that there was no escape route, INEC obliged to the court order but stated, however, that the party should pay the requisite fee before it could assess the materials and the information gathered from the presidential election. Notwithstanding that up to this moment, they are yet to give us all the documents we require. I continue to ask, why is INEC behaving in this way and manner? What are they hiding? What are they hiding? They are supposed to be neutral, but they are behaving as if INEC is a candidate in his own election. This should never be so. Recall, however, that Labour Party will be required to provide forensic experts to verify the legitimacy of the information made available to them by INEC. Taking a swipe, however, on the much rumored provision of witness for the tribunal, Labour Party counsel stated at the tribunal that the information extracted from the back end will determine how long it will take them to provide witnesses for the tribunal. It's to do case management, call witnesses that are very material, that will uh, enable us establish that what INEC did is very, very unfortunate. Facts, however, has it that the Labour Party has requested for a seven-week window to provide the witnesses 
but the court has demanded that the Labour Party and the Council reduce the number of weeks it will require to make available the witnesses in order to allow for ample time for them to make final decisions and give a verdict. You see, the important thing is uh, the court has a discretion to reduce the hearing, uh, the period of hearing as uh, presented in the, the Electoral Act. And that's what I've done because if we are to be given our seven weeks, it means that our petition will even expire. And uh, that will not be in our own interest. You see, we don't, we don't normally go back to what has been done. We are looking forward to how to prove our petition. And we believe we are going to prove it. These and more information from the tribunal do well to stick around as we will continually bring you updates.